Um, four years ago, uh, something unusual happened. The ambassador of the day, the ambassador's predecessor, uh, phoned me and asked me to come to Ottawa for a chat. And I said, that's bad. So I went to see the ambassador's predecessor, and the ambassador said, I want you to do two things. And I said, what do you want? And he said, first, I want you to rejoin the Canadian Polish Congress. I said, not a chance. I said, I'm too busy, and I'm not going to do that. And it's not because I don't believe in the great work of the Canadian Polish Congress. I support them. I admire them. They're doing great stuff. It's just I'm the busiest guy I know because I have run three careers at the same time. The last time I had a holiday, by absolute coincidence, was here, and it was six years ago. I came to Kananaskis to ski for six days, and so I remember my last holiday very well. I'm just a really busy guy. I admire the Congress, but I think the little time I do have, I need to devote to things that really work for me in terms of effort, and certainly the privilege I have of having had the opportunity to work with Marcin Zontka and company in YCPCA, and certainly Natalia and friends in thank you, Natalia and friends in terms of Peace has been an extraordinary honor. The second thing he asked me to do is he said, "I want you to get involved in a conference in Ottawa called Kovadis," and I looked at him and I said, "The answer to all questions in life is the same. The answer to all questions in everyone's life is it depends." And he says, what does it depend upon? And I said, well, the Army commander has me traveling all over the world doing very strange things, and everybody else wants me to do things, and if I'm in town, I will go. That event was followed up, or that discussion was followed up by a visit from my friend, the then attaché, who tragically died recently in Poland. And that was Commander Starobra, an absolutely wonderful Polish officer who did great service to his country during his term as military attaché to this country, because it was with Commander Starobrat that I started another extraordinary journey, and that was a Canadian Army officer who ended up working for the Polish Army and ended up working for Pol four Polish Army commanders. And that was truly an extraordinary personal journey, because time has changed literally everything, but more on that in a minute. In any case, my friend Kaji came to see me in Toronto and he said, you will attend. Now, being an army officer, being told by a Navy officer I'm going to do anything is naturally something that I would normally resist, but I like Kaji so much I said it would be my great pleasure. And the rest is history. Four years ago, there was a spark. And a spark led to a fire. And a fire has led to many more fires. And they're now burning not only in this country, they're about to burn in Chicago, and soon in Australia. And really, through the virtual world, the world you guys are very comfortable in and you live in, they're going to burn around the world, and in fact, they're already doing that. So now that we have lights, let me begin formal remarks. And forgive me, because again, I normally don't read anything. But again, I don't want to forget. So let me start with formalities, because they're important. We are honored and privileged this evening with the presence of extraordinary and distinguished persons. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Minister, Your Excellency, Consul General, Honorary Consuls, members of the Organizing Committee, Madam Chairperson, who I recall fondly with great trepidation visited me in Toronto about six weeks ago and all worried about what was going to happen and I said, great things are going to happen. All of you, the reason this works, and it's already succeeded, is simply because you're here, because you've made a commitment to supporting what happens next. So with that done, I'd like you to, take, I'd like you to invite you on a journey to Canmore. I was born in Canada, and Canmore, as I said, is a special place to me because I've visited many times, but again, it's the place of my last holiday. But Canmore is Alberta, and Alberta is my favorite province in Canada, even though I've been trashed ever since I got here because I happen to live in Ontario. <laughs> but I love Alberta because Alberta is the future. And really, the entire purpose of us getting together here is not to talk about yesterday or even today. The purpose of our meeting here in Canmore is to talk about tomorrow and the future 
And in this country, Alberta is very much at the heart of what happens next. So the journey to Canmore. Earlier today, somebody made an observation that the brilliant work of Tony Muszynski and a number of you who are in the audience tonight created an extraordinary event called Poland in the Rockies. And they said, that was the road to the journey that brought you here today. I think what you guys did in Poland in the Rockies, Tony and the rest of you, was truly spectacular. But it was not the beginning of the journey that brought you to this room today. I'd like, you to, take, I'd like to take you on that journey. The journey actually started not a number of years ago, but in fact more than a thousand years ago, when a fearful group of people on an open plain in what is referred to as Central Europe chose not their genes, but chose to build a thing called the community. Now, at the beginning, that may very well have been a very self-serving act, but it soon became so much more than a self-serving act because a community of people, in fact, became a people. A people on a collective voyage through time that generation after generation, living, loving, struggling, dying, through tempest, through war, through torment, through pain, through annihilation at Lignitsa, through the great commonwealth, through Vienna in 1683, a moment when they remembered not only their own interests as a people, but in fact were instrumental in saving the West, through national extinction, through rebellion after rebellion, through rebirth, through a second dismemberment, to a second battle, that again saves Western civilization, and the minister made reference wrong, the secretary made reference to this, the miracle on the Vistula outside of Warsaw, where for the second time, this interesting collection of persistent and difficult people in a difficult land stand again to defend not only themselves, but literally Western civilization. Through the gulags, through the concentration camps, through Monte Cassino, Monte Cassino, passerby, go tell Poland that we have perished in her service. For our freedom and yours, we, soldiers of Poland, gave our souls to God, our lives to the, soul, our lives to the, our lives to the soil of Italy, and our hearts to Poland. Through betrayal and enslavement, again through more rebellion, to solidarity, to a Polish pope, to 1989, to tonight. Why so much struggle, so much pain? Why from there to here? Why a journey of more than a thousand years? I would submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, to offer you a decision point. Decision point is an army term. It's when you get to some place and you have to decide what you're going to do next. A decision point. All of them brought you to a decision point in a place called Canmore, Alberta, to offer you a decision point because you are the fruit of all of those lives and all of those struggles that have come before you. But to decide what? To decide the, to decide the answer to a question. It has been said by people in literary criticism that there are only 10 questions that explain the human experience. But in fact, there's only one question that is at the core of the human experience. And it is a question that precedes the idea of Kovadis. It's not where we're going that is the first question, that is the most fundamental question. The most fundamental question for all human beings is not where we're going. That question follows. The first question is who are we? The answer is found in something that you can choose to ignore, and many people have chosen to ignore it, and certainly in the so-called Polish diaspora. But it is also an immutable fact that it is something you cannot change. So you can ignore it, you can choose to say it doesn't matter, but you can't change where you come from. You are who you are, because of them. 
because of them, that faceless number and thousands who have come before, the thousands, the millions, that struggle of more than a thousand years. So what? In the ever-growing complexities of the 21st century, does any of this matter? Who cares? That's yesterday. That's history. Does it matter? The answer is both the reason for your being and the core of your being. Because you are the product not only of biology, ladies and gentlemen, you are here tonight because somewhere within your souls or your hearts or your minds or perhaps all of the above, you have a sense of shared history. You share rituals. And you share patterns of interaction. You chose, you self-selected to be here this evening. Throughout the journey, the forces that brought you here tonight struggled to do that. They died to bring you to this room, to give you the choice to decide what happens next. But so what again? That was then, this is now. You are here, they are there. And whether there is the past or whether there is Poland, that's not Canmore, Alberta. But let me go back to that core question. Who are you? Who are you? What are you? And in answer or in partial answer, you are an expression of your own choices. At the core of these choices is the most important choice that revolves around whether the journey that began more than a thousand year, years ago continues or whether that journey stops in Canmore, Alberta. Again, you can ignore that, but you cannot deny it. So now in Canmore, Alberta, in this extraordinary place, surrounded by these extraordinary mountains, make a decision. You can choose to become part of what is now a global culture, a thing that I struggle with because it is amorphous, it is without soul, it is without history, it is without sense. It has no past. And because it has no past, it has no future. Or you can in Canmore, Alberta this evening, continue the journey. Bring into, not the present, but into the future, the memories of the journey, the trials of the journey, the failures of the journey, the burdens of the journey, and yes, the triumphs of the journey. Bring that into the present and offer them up in your own time and through your own work and your own efforts to the future. Remember, not because the Polish story is better than another story, but because of the cost that was paid to tell it, because of the cost that was paid to bring that story to Canmore, Alberta this evening, and because, again, and you can choose to ignore this, because it is your story. You are only here because of what happened then. Remember, because in the darkness you will see in the 21st century, you need a place to stand, and you will not find that in a society defined by narcissism and self-indulgence. Remember, because it is the point of departure for what happens next. It is through the building of templates, as in the work of peace, as in the work of the YCPCA, as in this fourth exercise of Kovadis, about to be followed by another iteration of Kovadis in Chicago, about to be followed by another in Australia, and more and more and more, as the fire burns brighter and brighter and brighter, a series of templates that through networks and through the extraordinary gift of modern media can be leveraged throughout the world and shared virtually not limited to Canmore, Alberta, but literally at the end of your fingertip touching the entire globe. A shared experience not just to remember, but far more importantly, the opportunity for each of you to build, to enrich, and to enable, 
a community that gives you a home in the sign curve that defines life in the 21st century. It is, if you vision it, if you begin it, what happens next? It is a new response by a new generation to both the Polish complex and the sins of the fathers. It is the opportunity for each of you to be not only a participant or an observer, it is your opportunity to be an ambassador and a mentor. It is an answer to darkness and fear. It is your opportunity, be it as a hybrid or a mutt or a don't know or an aren't sure or a still thinking about it, to assume the opportunity and the challenge not only of personal self-actualization, but the authorship of a story that really has deserved and earned its way into the 21st century. I'm humbled this evening because in this moment of your decision, which is what you're really here to do, in this moment of your decision, I have the great privilege of being in the company of limitless possibility. Thank you.